Hi folks, let's go over some 2D adaptive tips and tricks. How do we get the toolpath we want to machine this shelf on this relatively simple part, but a part that throws a couple curveballs our way? Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So the problem with this part, especially if you're newer to Fusion, is how do I get this shelf machined down with an adaptive strategy? I pick my tool, quarter inch end mill, go over to geometry, what's my pocket selections? Well, we want to pick contours. We don't want to just click on faces like this. If we pick this edge right here, or a contour, and click OK, kind of what we want, but if I go and add to it and click this one right here, well, now it's showing me this area right here, which is sort of the combination of where those two overlap, and that's not the toolpath I'm looking for. There's two different ways we can correct this selection. I'm gonna delete this chain. I'm gonna reselect just this edge. We've got a single blue line, and the shaded area represents what Fusion is going to try to machine. If I wanna update that single chain or that single contour to add some area to it, I'm going to left click on that line, let up, and I've got this new pop-up window. Right now, Fusion's going to let me update or add to this selection simply by hovering my mouse over it. You can see I can click and add, and I'm even gonna move over here, click and add that. Now, I like that, I wanna accept it, so I click this green plus. We've now got the blue toolpath correctly representing the selection that we want. Click OK. We can now see it's going to run a 2D adaptive toolpath, and it's gonna correctly machine this shell, because in this scenario, we haven't made this hole yet, so we need the toolpath to run through that area. The other way, arguably a little bit easier, edit our toolpath, delete that, and instead we could use the natural contour selection of the top of this geometry right here. There's one problem though, if we click OK, the toolpath looks right, but it's not on the right Z plane because it's defaulting right now to machine down to the selection that we used. So we'll update that under heights by saying the bottom height, instead of it being the selected contour, which is again what we just selected, we're gonna to change to selection, and then it's gonna ask us to pick a bottom reference. We're gonna pick that plane right there, click OK. And it's now gonna run that exact same toolpath, which is great. One other thing, let's say we just want to machine this L-shaped shelf. We don't want it going all the way around our part. Well, for starters, why is it going all the way around our part? It's going all the way around our part because if we look at the setup, we've got stock on all four sides of our part. So Fusion is using the adaptive strategy and it's thinking that you want it to walk all the way around because there's stock there. Now we could modify the stock setup, but that's not something we should do if this is really the stock we're going to be using. So the easiest way to fix this under Edit, Geometry, we can check stock contours, and that's going to let us override what is the stock that we've got to machine, and we can pick a profile that's gonna represent what our part is. Now, if I just pick this, we've got a problem. It's actually an interesting solution. It's gonna limit our tool pass, assuming that the hole's already there. So if the hole was there and you wanted to avoid it, this is a great way to do that. We don't like that, though. We can change that by clicking on this, hovering over here, accepting that new selection, and it's now limited our stock to just this area. Click OK. You could do the same thing by just picking the outside profile of the part. Unfortunately, that's one of the curveballs this part throws us, is we don't have a natural full plane profile. So if I click here, for example, it's only selecting this area. So again, I'd have to highlight over it, expand it to the full periphery of the part, except that we've now got a orange stock line that overrides our model stock, click OK, and we're gonna get a toolpath that only covers that shelf. More tutorials on things like 2D and 3D toolpath containment and all things Fusion 360 over on nyccnc.com. Thanks, folks.